In this tutorial, we're going to talk about creating queries in Spring Data JPA. So I had a question come in from a student, and I figured I would just create another lecture based on that. So the question was, all right, well, I know what I get when I extend the CRUD repository. I get the basics like save, delete, find one, find all, etc. But in my application, I have some real needs to create some custom queries. So we're going to take a look at that today, and we're going to use the blog application that we've been using throughout this course. And I've created a new uh, project here that I will link to. It, it is basically the same kind of project that we've been working with. And I'm going to kind of quickly walk through it, and then we'll take a look at creating some of those custom queries. So here I just have a regular, uh, my plain application class. This is our main class. In my post domain object, I have a couple of new things. One, I have a, a list of keywords, um, and these are just a list of strings. And I have a Boolean, uh, like an active flag on a post. And then here in the data loader, I have, I'm, lo I'm basically just loading up some data. So I create an author, and then I do a bunch of stuff, and I'm really just creating two posts in here with some specific data that I need to kind of cover uh, what I need to cover in this tutorial. So first, let's just go ahead and launch this application. And I just want to run the console just so we can take a look at what's going on here. All right, and it started up fine. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out too, um, the Spring Data JPA reference documentation, I'm going to link to this. This is invaluable. There is a ton of really great information in here. Once you get to the point where you're not sure what to do anymore with JPA, like, I, you know, I have my basics down, but I, I need to do this or I need to do that, this is where you need to look. There's a ton of great info in here, and I suggest you, you all read through um, maybe not the entire documentation, and there's a lot, but look look for specific things that you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and jump to localhost 8080. There's nothing there, um, but at least we started up. I want to go ahead and look at the console, and if we connect, so we have our author, we have our posts. If we run that, we have two posts in here, and then we also have a post keywords. And so that just has some keywords and they're associated to a post. So let's jump back to the application. Okay, so we're back in the application and what I wanna do now is look at our post controller. So our post controller only has one mapping at this point and it's to the slash posts slash mapping. And all that's gonna do is call a post service dot list. And if we look at our post service, a list just uses the post repository dot find all method. And the post repository is uh, nothing at this point. Let's go ahead and jump into that. And you'll see that all it does right now is extends the CRUD repository. And that's what gives us the find all method. So if we jump back to the browser, we can go ahead and go to slash posts. And we'll get a list of all the posts in our application. So right now we have two. So now let's jump back to the application. So now what we want to start doing is writing some custom queries. And I'm always going to start at the repository level because we need to think about what we're trying to create. So we have our list all, but let's start looking at some scenarios that may come up. Uh, the business comes to us and says, hey, we want to be able to find all of the posts by an author's first name. So we can actually do that really easily. We can come in here and say, all right, I'm gonna create a list of posts and I'm gonna start typing this out and I'm gonna say find all and hit control space, nothing yet, find all by. Now I have a list of properties on our post object. So now I'm gonna say by author. Now I don't wanna find just by author, maybe I just want the first name and I'm going to go ahead and pass a string into that of first name. So we have a first name argument going to that. So now based on that, we're going to get back a list of posts that have an author by the first name of whatever we're passing in. Right? So that works. 
So now what I like to do is just go to the controller level and let's say request mapping of let's say by author public by author and this is going to take a variable so we're gonna we're gonna have something like by author and then Dan or something like that right <clears throat> so we're going to say Okay, so we're basically saying by author, and then the first name is going to be a very a path variable there. Whoops, we don't want keyword, right? We want first. So the first variable is going to be uh, an argument for a string first. And we're going to pass this to a method called by author. We actually don't have that created yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and create that. And nope. Uh, Didn't like that, that's all right. Okay, so now in our post service, we have a method called by author, and it's really just calling our post repository. We could call that from the controller, but I like to separate out that business logic. So let's come back here, and this is actually just missing something. So that should work now. So we're going to go ahead and fire this back up, and we're going to look at calling the by author and using a first name. So if we look back at our, before I go ahead and reload it, we have an author of a first name of Dan Vega for both of them, or a, of Dan for both of them. So now if we go by author and then I pass in Dan, we're actually gonna get no results. And if you're at home trying to figure out why that happened, um, there's a simple explanation to that. So that is a case sensitive search. If we use the actual match of Dan with an uppercase D, we'll get back the results that we're looking for. So we have two of them. So there's actually a way that we can go ahead and fix this. So we could change this, but I'm gonna go ahead and create another one just so I have it here. And so now, uh, no matter what, this should ignore case. And so it's going to use a uh, case insensitive search against this. So let's throw this in here instead of this one and reload this. And while that's reloading, I want to look at something. So where I'm getting a lot of this information here is if we come down and look at query creation, uh, it starts to show you how you can build these queries out. And one of the really helpful tables here is right down here. And it has all the information for, where are you at? Uh, creating, let's jump back up here real quick. I think I jumped to the wrong section. We want query creation.
There we go. I was in the wrong section. I wanted um, GPA repositories, uh, query methods, query creation. So let's jump back up there and just look at this so we we'll know we're in the right section. So we want to be in for query, query creation. All right, so that's where we're at. So you can see that in this table here, there's a lot of ways that you can start to string things together. So if we wanted to say by first name and last name, we could, or we could say by first name or last name. Uh, we can do a lot of, in, there's a lot of things in here. So I would take a look at this, um, but then there's some things like this, ignoring case. So you'll see basically what the query ends up being is it takes an uppercase of the argument against whatever you're passing in. So that's one, one way that we can do it. So now if we come back here and just do Dan, we're gonna get the results that we're looking for. What I wanna talk about now is, let's take a look at what's going on in the background here when we actually run that query. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, <clears throat> and I'm gonna clear out my council here. One thing you'll note is in the resources, I have some logback configuration here that just turns on Hibernate logging so we can get a little more info in the council as to what, what is really happening here. So there's nothing in the council. Let's go ahead and run that query again. So we're just going to refresh and then go back to our council. And if we look at this, the query that's happening up top, you'll see it's selecting a bunch of stuff from the post. Then it's doing an outer join with the author. And then it's saying where upper. And it's, so it's taking an uppercase of the author first name in the table against an uppercase of the value that we're supplying in the argument. So this is important when you're starting to play around with all these custom queries trying to understand exactly what's happening here. Look at the SQL and you'll get a much better idea of what it's doing behind the scenes. It's not just magic, it's creating SQL for you, um, but it's doing it efficiently. So that's definitely a help when you're, when you're starting to play around with a lot of this stuff. So let's go back. Now we got two methods here. Let's start to think about this now. What we have here is we have spring data rocks and grails is awesome. And if you notice here, the date on this one is 1218 and the date on this one is 1219. Right now it's just ordered in the order that we created them. But obviously if this were a blog, we'd want the latest one first, right? So we'd want to order it by posted on descending. And fortunately for us, there's an easy way to do that. So again, I'm just, you could just rewrite that one, but I'm just gonna create a new one here just so we can kind of look at all of them. So I'm gonna say find all by author, first name, ignore case. And now I wanna say order by posted on descending. And so if we were to change that out, um, that would go ahead and let's do that. Let's actually pull that. And we're gonna go back in our post service and just replace this method and fire this back up. And so at this point, when we refresh this, when the application comes back up, the Grails is awesome post should be first because that is the latest one. And so it is. So you can see just in the repository here using the, the spring data capabilities, we can start to build out queries that we're gonna need in our application. So let's just take a look at one more. Maybe we want a list of posts. And I don't know, maybe this time we wanna search by first name and last name, maybe not just first name, right? So we could say find all by author first name and so let me hit control space here so we get some intelligence here that kind of gives us all of those the lists back in that table that I was showing you um, we could do a lot of things here like ins or likes or equals um, I'm just gonna do an and here but you can see we get that assist there so I'm gonna say first name and if I hit control space again oh, I should have got that I don't know why that didn't come up but we're saying find all by author, first name, and 
Oh, uh, okay. That's actually why we didn't get that assist. Um, so we want to say by, you know, author, last name, and now we're going to pass in a string of first and a string of last. So one thing to note here, too, um, that I've come across, we're not actually going to run this example because it's just going to show you exactly what we've been looking at. But you may come in here and do something like this. And you may think that'll work, but it's actually not going to work the way you want it to work. So all this ignore case is doing is ignoring case for last name. It's not ignoring it for both. So if we want to do that, we actually have to go ahead and ignore a case. So find all by author first name, ignore case, and author last name, ignore case. So we could do something like that, or we can say or if we wanted to, but you get the idea. So we're starting to build out these dynamic queries, and there's really not much we have to do to make that happen.